So Kalki, I want to talk about identity. Mm. What is identity to you? I mean, you have, you have an amazing <laughs> mix of backgrounds to be here. So tell me your background and your mix and your identity. If I figure it out, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> right now, I, I have no idea. I, uh, as you know, I was born in South India. Uh, my parents are both French, but I grew up all my life in India, lived here all my life. They've been here for 40 years. So basically, my skin is white and my heart is brown. Say something in a language you feel comfortable with. Tamil, Tamil, do you know? <laughs> so when you do, do you ever have situations where somebody says something in Tamil, yeah. not knowing you understand? <laughs> very, very often. I mean, uh, I've had very entertaining conversations happen right in front of me. Two boys, you know, commenting on, on me, saying, you know, and not, I mean, they can be taken as flattering or slightly, you know, lewd comments that they'll be making about me. And then at the end of their conversation, I'll say something in Tamil and their jaw drops open <laughs> and they're like, oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, that happens. That happens uh, quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. So you obviously are raised here, went to a boarding school. What were you like as a kid? I mean, as, for an actor, we always think of people who are exuberant, excited mm -hmm. out there. Were you like the popular chick in school or what were oh, you God, like when no. you were growing up? <laughs> Not at all. I was, uh, I was very, very painfully shy. I, uh, I, I, you know, I grew up in a school which was this British school in South India, an English medium school. When I first got there, I had a French accent because I was six years old and at, at home I spoke French. So I used to say things like concumber for cucumber. And you know, people used to really make fun of that. So I quickly like changed that and became very, you know, normal in the way I spoke or whatever. And then, you know, my Tamil like sort of took a backseat as well because English was like cool and everything. So there were all these things where I, you know, I was, I think since a very young age, trying very hard to just be, be what I, you know, what everybody else wants me to be. I was always quiet. I was very... Uh, you know, uh, shy. I never really, you know, expressed what I felt and things like that. And uh, and I, I was, I had braces for like five years. So you know, I had no chance with most of the boys. And uh, I think the the way that I used to protect myself was by being a clown, by by making people laugh. You know, so that was my kind of barrier. That was my way of, you know, making friends uh, and not, not really showing people my, my insecurities or what I was really inside. Yeah. So from this painfully shy girl to take one of the most daring roles in Devdi, I mean, that's quite a stretch. So what was it, what made you decide you wanted to be an actress? Maybe tell us a little bit about, did you have a struggle before you wanted to become an actress or was it easy for you? It, it, it was a long struggle. Uh, it was a long struggle convincing my mother that I'm not insane. Really, from a, from a young age, I, I always was, was the one place where I could just go and do something and become a character was, was on stage, you know. So in school, we used to have drama productions and suddenly I was, you know, somebody else and it was very liberating for me seeing as I don't know who I am myself. And then when I grew up and uh, suddenly I had to you know, become an adult and do something with my life. I, I, I don't take myself seriously enough to do something serious. So, you know, I, like everything I do, I've got to do it with some fun. And, and, and also, really, I don't take myself seriously. Like, you know, I'm the first person to laugh at myself and things. So I think this, this was, for me, just the first thing that came to mind was, was something creative, drama, and, and then I went to university in London, I, I went to Goldsmiths, and I studied drama there, and again, I, w I felt like I didn't know where I was, who I was, because suddenly I was in this country where everybody thought I was, you know, for, I mean, I was from there, you know, they thought yeah. I was from England or from France, and yet, you know, when I said I'm Indian and my name is Kalki, and then they were like, oh, you don't look Indian but yeah. you don't sound English, but you don't, you know, and so yeah. you don't, where are you from? And I, yeah, I still don't have an answer for that. So um, 
I lost my train of thought. What were you asking? Okay, <laughs> it, uh, you know, continuing on that. What was your first break? You know, when you when I first when you auditioned for that. See, I, I after after I finished uh, my theatre studies in London, I went ahead. I came back home and I started doing theatre here. And uh, I, I I did a lot of sort of physical theatre, improv, improvisational theatre. And uh, I I didn't know where I was going, but I knew that there was one thing that I was really hungry about, and that's you know, telling stories and becoming somebody else. And in that, you start to understand somebody else, I think. And that's what I loved about, it, uh, about acting, that, you know, right. yeah. <laughs> acting is therapy. It's like you go into somebody else's mind, you discover things, and then you feel a lot less distant from people because you, who cares if they don't think the same way or they behave strangely or, you know, they might have so many different things which at first you, you're so... It's so easy to judge somebody just by looking at them. And I think when, when you start to take acting seriously, you really sort of break that down and, and you know, see the humanity and the people behind that. So that's what I loved. And then, yeah, I, I came back to India. I did lots of theater, and I went and did this audition for Dev D. And the audition for Dev D was funny because I, uh, I got a call, and they said, uh, yeah, there's an audition uh, for this, this, this. And I, I saw the script, and it was in, in Hindi. So I said, I'm really sorry you have the wrong person. My Hindi is really bad. I, I, I don't think I can do this. So they gave me the script in English, and I did it. And 10 minutes after I left their office, I got a call from Anurag. Anurag, the director, obviously you know him. Um, and what they told me about the audition was that, you know, being it, it's the role of a prostitute, and everybody who came for the audition either did two things. One, they judged the script and said, oh, this is just dirty and it's like, it's, it's por pornographic. I mean, how can you make a film like this? Or they would, they would think that playing a prostitute, like there was a sex, phone sex scene. Yeah. So they would play it in a very overly sexual way. Like, oh my God, I'm, I'm loving this. I, this is so wonderful. And, I'm, you know, and actually, somebody who's doing that on a daily basis, who's, who's you know, a prostitute, is not going to be, she's probably going to be doing other things. You know, this is like, you know, a, yeah. a call center call, you know. You know, she's, she's actually, so she'll be like, yeah, yeah, baby, it's wonderful, it's lovely. And she'll be like on her computer or doing other stuff, you know. And that, that for me was, that's what I, I interpreted as, and that's what got me the role. So, yeah. yeah. So how do you prepare for a role? Oh. <sighs> I mean, I, I, I think I'm, I'm just so overexcited when I get a role that I, I, I do too much work. I believe in doing too much work. I believe in just going out, researching and digging and, and annoying my director and calling them up every day and saying, what, can, what else can I do? Tell me, tell me, should I watch some movies, read some books, do this, this, do that. I do my research and everything. And I have way too much information which I'll never be able to use. And then I let it all go when I come on set. You know, I, I feel you have to be ultra prepared and then wait for the surprise, you know. Just let things surprise you. Let the other actor surprise you or let your director tell you, no, I don't want you to do it in this way. I want you to do it that way. So, yeah. So, everybody knows you as an actress. What, tell me your other avatars as a writer, as a poet, <laughs> what are the other things you do that, are you, that you're equally excited about? Um, I like sitting cross-legged. <laughs> uh, I, I like to write, but no, you know what, I don't know if I like to write. I'm a very reluctant writer. I, I, I've written all my life, but I've noticed that I only write when I'm depressed or unemployed. So I don't know if I really like to write. It's a, it's Have a, you been writing anything lately? I've, I've been writing something, yeah, a few months back. Which I, one is it? Depressed <laughs> or unemployed? Both, both. <laughs> uh, uh, or bored, maybe. Uh -huh. that, that, that was the other one. But um, I, yeah, I, I just wrote a, a play recently. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it comes out of a need to expel stuff and get stuff out on, uh, rather than, you know, I, I, it's a very personal thing, my writing. It's not yeah. really something that I do for somebody else. Uh, of course, you know, when you put a play up, you put it up for an audience. But when I write it, I, I really just get it out of my system. So do you have anything you want to read or tell us about your play? Any? any uh, yeah, I, you, you, yeah. You 
uh, unfortunately yes. told me to print out something. Yes, I so would like I, you to read your poem. I it, couldn't yeah, see I, it in your hands. I don't so. know if you, you call it a poem because technically I think it's zero, but it's like a rant, you know, it's just something that I wrote. And uh, yeah, I'll just go for it. We are the people of the world, the collective, the masses, the capitalist communal fascists. We are you. We are ready for action, for tragedy, atrocity atrocity, hostility, and fashion. We are the impersonal. We love great films, but we don't live great lives. We create drama, but shy away from real life. We are an army of sheep. We fight for causes and stand up in the streets. We fight for clauses, throw stones and bombs, and then build tombs with our feet. We are an amorphous blob. We are a greedy fat man standing in a queue, unnoticed, a nobody, a slob. We are nameless so that we can be shameless. We are the mob, the headless god. We are blameless. Debates, chat shows, votes of the public, and no opinion of our own. Online indulgence, typing thoughts borrowed from a borrower, selected, educated, and thoroughly plagiarized thoughts, do's and oughts, typed, copied, copied, pasted, pasted, passed, passed in unprinted pages of a virtual web of denser than the dark ages. Thoughts that we copy, Thoughts we copyright, thoughts we own, and thoughts we're not thinking alone. Everybody writes about it, thinks about it, talks about it. But if somebody is actually doing it, nobody gives a shit. The we, the fancy lives of the we. We make news out of lipstick, travel, and choice of ice cream. All frivolous news that comes out of our pockets and leaves us nation starving. We, the people, we, the classes, we, the businessman, we, the poor man, we, the ladies who pout with the fat off their asses. Our self-worth rests on the opinion of others, on magazine covers, on how many more overs, on frequent lovers. We, the masses, the people, the system, the supporters, the obedient payers of taxes. We are to blame, we should be ashamed. We have neighbors, we have money, we have poverty, we have each other. We are the problem, we are the solution. We could know who we are, we could go far, if we just stop being so we. So, my last question to you, Kalki. You are the future, young, you know, you're part of the Inc. Fellows program. As you look at the future as a young person, what, do, what would you like to do and what do you wish happened? I think it's too early for me to say what I wish to happen. I, I don't wish anything to happen. I'm, I'm terrible at planning things and I don't want to predict anything. I feel that everybody you know, actually is, is so afraid of facing themselves most of the time. Um, you know, we are always being people for somebody else. And this is my, me personally I'm talking about as well. I've always been somebody for somebody, you know, like played somebody for other people. And I think acting and, and finding something that you're passionate about is, is a way to really be truthful with yourself and be honest with yourself and uh, I don't really have any, you know, sort of way of living or, you know, a philosophy of life except that, you know, there's a Japanese saying that I like which says, uh, uh, yesterday worse than today, tomorrow better than today or something like that. But basically, you know, there's another day coming and you, you just need to keep going and you need to get better. Yeah. And uh, I think that's it, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're too busy judging other people or, you know, judging how we should be with other people uh, rather than just concentrating on, you know, what's in front of us. Take a step, move forward, do something. Great. Thank you for being here, Kalki. Thank you.